Hello, this is part two of my interview with Sister Colette, novice mistress here at the Poor Clares Monastery in Galway, Ireland. Sister, thank you very much for having us here again. I thought we'd begin section two of this interview by explaining this. It's a very unusual structure, and I think coming to a convent in which there is cloister, we'll explain what that is in a few seconds, uh, it's uh, interesting to understand what this is all about and the origins of this, what we call this, is a screen. So we're going to go back to Sister Colette, and she's going to give us the insights to what this is. Also, you have to realize, as Sister will explain, that this is a secluded convent. It's in the middle of Galway. Uh, it's a location of prayer. You'll understand that as we continue. Okay, Sister, thank you very much again for the interview. Uh, let's explain what this is okay. and the origins of the, the concept. Well, we take a vow of enclosure. Uh, some we're a contemplative monastery, a monastery of contemplative nuns, and uh, some, some orders that are similar to us observe enclosure, but don't take a vow of, a vow of enclosure. But for ourselves, we actually take a vow of enclosure. So we have the three traditional vows that religious have, poverty, chastity, and obedience. And we take a fourth vow of enclosure. Mm. So the grill, we call it the grill, is, right. is a symbol of the enclosure. Uh, as you can see, it's not going to keep me out or keep right, you in, right, or right. the other way around, <laughs> or keep me in or keep you out. Uh, it's a symbol of a deeper reality. And uh, really, it's a symbol for every Christian that there's a place in our heart mm. only reserved for the Lord, for Jeez. our relationship with the Lord. And this uh, is a symbol of that there is a sacred, like a holy holies mm -hmm. uh, within our hearts and within every Christian heart where we can meet Jesus face yeah. to face. And um, we renovated this building, as explained to Father Louis, uh, in 2009. And we were wondering, you know, um, the counter would have been sufficient. Okay. Um, but did we want to retain the grill? And all of the sisters, except for one, I could say bar one, and that would be <laughs> fun, <laughs> um, felt, yes, we wanted to retain a grill of some kind. But we didn't want it to be imposing, uh, that it would be a barrier or um, put a distance between ourselves. Because... Uh, as I say, there's a mutual relationship between ourselves and the people who come to us, people who come looking for prayers. And so that it's not a, a barrier between relationship mm -hmm. and between uh, um, explaining our lives. And yet it leaves a question mark. Uh, right. Why? So uh, for us, we wanted to retain it because it, it does speak uh, without saying anything. Yes. And... Um, I think that uh, I think we've come to a good, <laughs> a good you know, we, we had great meetings kind of uh, <laughs> trying to design it because we wanted to get away. We used, the previous one had bars down okay. and it was actually it was a beautiful grill too. the metal in it was lovely, but it was dark. It was a metallic finish and it just in photographs so that it looked dark and um, the kind of downward bars kind of give an impre impression of prison, which is not. No. I'm not imprisoned here, okay. you know, and um, so we didn't want to give that impression and yet we wanted to retain something so it's bright mm -hmm. and uh, there's various interpretations of what, what it actually is. Like the, the sun or the Eucharist or <laughs> right. oh, you know, right, there's right, all right. kinds of things. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's it's a symbol of the, the fact that we have stepped back from maybe mainstream life and um, we're still very much part of the world and uh, we're not uh, we're human and fully human fully alive and yet we've taken a step back uh, to be in the world for the world yes. but in a um, I suppose in a deeper way to kind of concentrate on the Lord and it's to facilitate that it's not it's not um, an imposition no no so the sisters here don't go into the city not usually. We, we, um, St. Clair had, had things like for necessary, reasonable. St. Clair, the, the founder. The founder of the with Saint Francis. With St. Francis. Right. And uh, so she, um, you know, so we, we, 
she would say we never leave except for and so for us it would be dental if we go to the dentist or the optician or the hospital for tests okay. or to exercise um you know uh, you know for to to vote okay. <laughs> constitutional rights I was trying to think of the word um so for necessary reasons oh, okay. but other than that we don't okay. yeah. and, and occasionally as well we have a federation uh, of poor clears in Ireland and they may run a course every few years or something like that. Oh, and you'll meet. Mm. Okay. Mm. How many convents or monasteries throughout Ireland are there? There are six. Six? Or seven. Six, I think. Okay. And spread throughout the country? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are they in the north? Uh, they were in Belfast, but they they closed in Belfast two years ago. Okay. Yeah. So now Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, the outside world, I want to bring that in for a second. When guests come, who are the guests? And who are the people who come? <clears throat> well, um, to the parlour, usually this is the parlour where we, this would be where we'd meet our families. And okay. um, sisters would have a few close friends maybe that come to visit them. So they would be usually the visitors. But we have a lot of people coming to the door and they meet the sisters. Uh, sorry, they, they meet, they come to the door looking for prayers. They may want to meet a sister, they may not. And if they do, a sister is available to, to talk to them. Sometimes they just want to write a petition and leave it mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. um, so they would come to the front door and there's a reception area there. Uh, it's only if they wanted to talk to some, talk about something more personal that they could come into the parlour or that. It's not okay. necessarily usually. And how many of these parlours do you have? We have three parlours. And Because yesterday when we came, we went with Sister Anne mm -hmm. uh, in the, the parlour named St. Anthony. Oh, yes. <laughs> that, that's the smallest has one. It, has its own <laughs> name. name. Yeah, that's yeah, great. So this is St. Clair's. St. Clair's. Yeah. That's great. Uh, let's talk about St. Clair, the, or, the origins of the uh, poor Clairs. I know St. Francis was an associate of hers. Yes, uh, she was very inspired by St. Francis. He was older than her, but they were contemporaries. And um, she used to meet him secretly with a companion and she heard him preaching. And through that, she left home one night when she was 18. Mm. Very brave. Uh, she went through what was called the door of death. It was particular. She was uh, of the nobility. So, um, you know, they were a, a very important family. It was expected that she would marry strategically. Mm -hmm. um, but she, that, wasn't she, that wasn't what she wanted. So she, one night, Pan Sunday, uh, in the middle of the night, she ran away with her friend. Her companion went with her to accompany her, went to the Port Siuncla, which is at the, just outside the city of Assisi. Mm -hmm. And that was the centre of the Franciscan order. So St. Francis received her into the order at that stage. So at that stage, it wasn't even the poor Claire's. She was becoming, she was received by St. Francis, who had, a, who had, it's just male companions. Right. So I'd say he didn't know what to do with her. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so he brought her to um, a Benedictine monastery first and then to another monastery. Um, and then they came to San Damiano, which was one of the churches that St. Francis rebuilt. Yes. And yes. that was where she lived uh, her religious life. She. Yeah, she left. She left home in uh, twelve twelve, and she died in twelve fifty three, twelve fifty four. Mm -hmm. Around that. For further information, you have to go online and research Portuncola, Assisi, San Damiano, of course, Saint Francis, because you'll have all of the locations which are there now, very well attended and visited by people throughout the world. And Portuncola is a little chapel within a huge church, Santa Maria degli Angeli, which is Our Lady of Angels, and that Pochunco is a little chapel, and in that building is where St. Francis died. So we're going back to Sister. <laughs> so he, he received St. Clair there, and he cut her hair. That was part of the reception ceremony. And she had beautiful long blonde hair. You yes. associated with an Italian, really. She, yes. And they, they still have her hair. And then her, uh, so he brought her to this Benedictine monastery, which was, had, it was a papal sanctuary. And her uncle, who seems to have been the father, must have been off the scene at that stage, possibly dead. He came after her because she was valuable. And uh, so he, when he came in, she held the altar cloth, which was showing that she was taking refuge and uh, claiming the papal protection and took off her veil to show her shorn head that mm. she had made the consecration. So he couldn't touch her. And he didn't either, yeah. So they knew what they were doing. They yeah. had to call out. <laughs> they, they, yes, exactly. Sometimes you get the idea that he was naive and she was naive. Mm -hmm. They weren't. They were very intelligent, well-trained, yeah. educated. Yeah, and, and she had a focus. Kind of, very much. She certainly had a focus 
in the sense of, of uh, she, even you can see with her rule, she was the first lady to write a rule in, uh, for religious women. Mm. And um, you can see what she took from the Franciscan rule and what's her own. Right, you right, know, right, yeah, right. So she very much had a mind of her own. So when you originally came and you, you met with the abbess here, uh, did she educate you in the ways of the, the Franciscan ideal charism or did you do that on your own? I, I suppose that it was very conversational. Good. You know, we just used to chat and I suppose just in the course of that you were getting more information. I didn't know that much about St. Clair before I uh, entered. I just okay. was attracted to uh, it being Franciscan and being a, a vocation of prayer. And I suppose I, I just grew in my appreciation of her since I entered more than uh, I didn't know that much about her. What did your girlfriend peers think of you when you said, <laughs> you see that convent over there? <laughs> I'm going to join them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got all kinds of reactions, really. And, um, you know, it was amazing. Some people that you thought would understand because I was involved at prayer meetings for uh, um, a few years before I entered, three or four years. And um, so some of my girlfriends would know that. Yes. So they knew that I was taking my faith seriously and yet they could see I was still having a good social life. Uh, so some of them were amazed and some of them were um, not surprised either. And um, But some of the people that I thought would understand more, maybe in the prayer circles, kind of didn't get it at really? all. Yeah, and then other people that maybe weren't even practicing their faith could really, really get it. It was really amazing. It, it was an amazing journey, really, because um, I suppose uh, in coming in, you're saying goodbye to a lot of different things, a lot of different people, and you get a chance to say things that we don't normally say to each other as friends or family or relations, and um, that maybe we only say when we're dying. Mm. And uh, so it was, it was, it was a painful journey in many ways, but it was a, a beautiful journey, and. Uh, yeah. Because you were being called. I mean, yes. from inside. I yes. mean, so your your heart was focused. Uh -huh. That's that's great. Typically, a young woman comes. What is she going to expect when she's all stages of inquiry, discernment, novice? What what should she expect here? Okay. Well, um, I suppose when somebody is thinking about it first, it's good to to make contact because. Um, like with the internet and social media and everything is fantastic yes because yes, it's great. you know uh, you can check out different websites read uh, look at, at video clips like this this even <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it gives you a feel for for what it's about you know you have this stirring in your heart and you're just kind of wondering is it this could it be this do i really want this and then you have uh, the possibility to investigate without making a um, kind of a big commitment mm. you know so that's very good uh, there's an awful lot of information out there and to be discerning about where you get the information for because of course there's misinformation sure, as well sure. uh, but really personal contact is so important that's good that's because good. we can have a, um, even watching an interview like this we can have a completely different idea of what the reality is like right and right. to come to the place first of all there's there's a uh, there's something about each individual place. Um, you know, I had thought maybe a Port Clare monastery, not in Galway, and I had gone to visit a few of them. And you get a sense of... Oh, interesting. Yeah, good, good. I think I was expecting a, a thunder and lightning, or a <laughs> flash of lightning when I got to the right one. That didn't happen. No, no, no. But there was a, a, a sense of rightness. Right. So it's it's the same, I suppose. When you you know when you meet somebody, if you're attracted to someone, you can't put your finger on it. Exactly. But exactly. you just know there's something there, and um, so it, it's the same. There is something about the place, and people even yeah, say location, when location, yes, location, location. Yeah, <laughs> so. and when they come into the monastery here, even though we're in the centre of the city, that's so peaceful. Oh, and it's, everything. It's yeah. heavenly, really. Mm. And we cross the bridge and. It's another world. Yeah. We were saying it yesterday. Yeah. It's so peaceful yeah. outside and inside. Yeah. What's interesting, I want to tell you two things. Um, this morning, because I kind of celebrated Mass, um, some of the friends that I was visiting here came. Now, one of them is from Holland, and we had a long conversation the other day, and they have no faith. I mean, she has no faith, okay, no religious faith. Mm. Uh, she's excited about her children uh, talking about God. 
but she, she didn't grow up with God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what that's like to grow up without any knowledge of religion, mm -hmm. okay? So she said, but that's most of the countries like that. And she heard I was here today and she came and she was so impressed. I don't think she's ever been to a Catholic mass. And this was simple, mm -hmm. but it was beautiful with mm -hmm. the singing of the sisters. So I think your mission went out through the gates and into Holland eventually, <laughs> because it, it, it touched the simplicity it's and the amazing. peace touched, touched mm -hmm. her, I know, I know it did. Yeah. And it was just a beautiful experience to be here. You said before that you're not in prison, we we're talking about these. Your choice was to leave the world, yet you, I've spoken to yourself, Sister Faustina, okay. a few other sisters, you guys are very aware of what's going on out there. You, you obviously you're educated. You you read. Let us know more about that. What, what what's that all about? Well, it's important to know what what's happening in the world. Yes. I mean, we're here uh, before the Lord, like Moses was really interceding before the Lord, uh, bringing people's petitions. So people come, as I said earlier, to to ask for prayers. So we have. A, a, a volume, you know, volume of people coming to the door looking for prayers all mm -hmm. the time, letters also, and uh, so from that, you know, you get a great insight into the burdens that people are carrying, and often silently, really, people don't know the burdens that other people are carrying. We can we can put on a brave face, but then when when you meet people face to face or they pour their heart out in a letter, you can really see what's going on mm. in people's lives. So that is illuminating. Then, you know, our families, uh, the contacts that we have with them. And also, um, one or two, a few of the sisters would listen to the radio news at one o'clock mm -hmm. uh, every day, and just to keep abreast of what's happening and fill the rest of us in. Then we get a uh, Catholic newspaper every week. So that's very good on world news as well. Sure. It's very important because we're here representing the world and praying for the world. And, and it would be a misunderstanding to, to think that the sisters who embrace this life escape the world. You're oh. praying for the world mm -hmm. and, and for us outside you couldn't, in the trenches. You couldn't stay here if you were trying to escape the world. Good. You know, Why? Because uh, we carry we carry ourselves in, in with the world. So if you're trying to escape, what are you trying to escape from? Usually it's our own responses to our, our, our own wounds and hurts. And if you didn't have the vocation to live in enclosure, you couldn't, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't stay. Um, our, our way of life, I, I mean, I think that there are an awful lot more ways to escape outside. <laughs> you know, if you're having a bad day, you can check something out on YouTube or get a video or go to the movies or go for a drink, ring somebody. You don't have those opportunities here. So you're left with your own fragility. Mm -hmm. And it's in that actually that we find the Lord. But it, the, there's no escaping what's going on in our own hearts, especially in here. There's no chaining the word of the <laughs> Lord and there's no escape in yeah, the world. Yeah. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Sister Colette, Mistress novices here at the Poor Clare Monastery in Galway, Ireland. We're going to have another interview in a few moments, and you'll see it in subsequent uh, segments. But you realize with each segment we've had so far, we've gone deeper into the life of the sisters and, and the tr transcendent spirituality and yet connection with God that they have um, as they, the sisters, pray for us out there and come into a greater appreciation of their own spirituality inside the convent. This has been Father Louis Skirty and Sister Collette with Friends of the Word. We thank you for joining us and we ask you to tune in to our next segments. And we're going to put information on our credits for how to get in touch with these sisters here in Galway and other poor Clares throughout the world because this is the World Wide Web. Thank you. Keep the word alive and well. God bless you.